Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of a STEMI patient with all three coronary arteries originating from the right. The patient is a 45-year-old man who presented with severe chest pain radiating down his left arm while he was doing yard work. He has no prior medical problems, uh, but did acknowledge having mild exertional chest discomfort for the past several months, uh, which uh, he had been ignoring. In the ER, he was nauseated and bradycardic. Uh, the ECG showed inferior ST elevations and complete heart block. The STEMI team was activated. We uh, inserted a, a temporary transvenous pacing catheter from the uh, right femoral vein and then attempted to engage the left coronary system. However, the left main could not be engaged and there was no opacification of the left coronary system uh, with the non-selective injection. We engaged the right with a six French uh, JR4 guiding catheter. Uh, the culprit is clearly uh, the lesion in the mid RCA. Uh, an anomalous left coronary artery is seen and it looks like uh, it's the LAD, uh, but we still could not see uh, the left circumflex. Uh, so, but given that it's a STEMI, uh, we couldn't dawdle around, uh, so we went ahead and uh, fixed the right. Uh, PCI was uh, very straightforward. Uh, we wired the lesion with a standard BMW workhorse wire, uh, pre-dilated with a 2.5 millimeter balloon, uh, stented with a 4.0 by 23 millimeter uh, DES, and post-dilated with a 4.0 uh, millimeter NC balloon. We uh, did a post-stent injection, and uh, to our surprise, all three coronary arteries opacified. The uh, angiogram looked a little bit like uh, Triton's trident. Uh, having all three coronary arteries originating from the right uh, is an extremely rare uh, coronary anomaly. We uh, did OCT and uh, identified an edge dissection at the distal edge of the stent, uh, which we tacked up uh, with an overlapping 4.0 by 12 millimeter uh, DES. And uh, we had a good uh, final angiographic result. The uh, patient did well. Uh, he only had a minimal uh, troponin elevation. Uh, his EF uh, remained normal. Um, a, a coronary CTA uh, to delineate the three-dimensional course of his LAD and left circumflex uh, was recommended. So coronary anomalies are relatively rare, uh, but you will see them a few times a year in a busy cath lab. Uh, Paolo Angelini uh, wrote a very nice article in circulation in 2007, in which he noted that the frequency of coronary anomalies uh, based on a continuous series of 1,950 angiograms uh, is over 5%. Uh, now, um, some of these are relatively mild uh, abnormalities that many interventional cardiologists would not necessarily consider uh, to be an anomalous uh, coronary artery. For instance, a split RCA, uh, that is an RCA with a very proximal PDA origin, or uh, an RCA with an ectopic high and downward takeoff uh, in the right uh, cusp. Uh, for what most uh, interventional cardiologists mean when they talk about anomalous coronary arteries, uh, the most common is the RCA uh, arising from the left, and that has an, a frequency of 0.92%. Uh, next is the left circumflex from the right uh, uh, with a frequency of 0.67%. Uh, the left main arising from the right has a frequency of 0.15%. Our patient's anomaly is far less common and is not on this table. His LAD and left circumflex arise independently from the right uh, without a left main. Uh, this is extremely rare. Um, if your patient has an anomalous coronary artery, uh, the principal concern is whether the course that the artery takes uh, could cause a problem. Uh, remember that the uh, aorta uh, sits uh, behind uh, the uh, pulmonary artery uh, in the chest. And normally the left main coronary artery uh, goes around the uh, uh, pulmonary artery um, uh, to get to the anterior wall of the heart. 
um, if you have an anomalous left main coronary artery from the right, uh, you are still okay if it courses either anterior uh, to uh, the pulmonary artery or posterior to the aorta and then all the way around uh, the uh, pulmonary artery. However, if it takes a course between the aorta and the pulmonary artery, uh, then it could be a problem. Uh, this is the so-called high-risk inter-arterial inter variant uh, because a compression of the left main coronary artery by the two great vessels, uh, such as during exertion, uh, could cause chest pain, uh, ventricular arrhythmias, or even um, sudden cardiac death. Um, in addition to an interarterial course, uh, there are other coronary anomaly variants that are considered high risk. Uh, an intramural course uh, is uh, similar uh, to an interarterial course, except that the anomalous vessel courses within uh, the media of the aortic wall. Uh, anomalous uh, coronary artery with a slit like ostium, uh, with an acute takeoff angle, or with a flattened uh, ellipsoid proximal course are all considered high risk as well. Now, very commonly, uh, coronary artery anomalies will be an incidental finding in an otherwise asymptomatic patient. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, not surprisingly, there isn't a lot of uh, clinical data on how to best manage uh, anomalous coronary arteries. Uh, but uh, Christoph Grani's article uh, in JAK Imaging in 2017 uh, does offer some helpful strategies. Uh, the algorithm uh, can seem a bit complicated, uh, but the main message is to start with non-invasive 3D imaging modality. At our center, uh, we typically refer for coronary CTA. If the coronary CTA shows that the anomalous coronary artery takes a low-risk course, uh, then you're done. Um, no further treatment is necessary. On the other hand, uh, if the coronary course is high risk, uh, then the next step is stress testing, and patients are advised to restrict physical activity until workup is done. If the stress test is positive in the relevant territory, uh, then revascularization is uh, recommended. If the stress test is negative, revascularization could still be considered if it's the left main coronary artery that is involved or if the patient is young. For symptomatic patients with chest pain, the algorithm is similar. Again, start with 3D coronary imaging, such as a coronary CTA. If the course is low risk, uh, then look for other causes of chest pain, uh, such as coronary artery disease. If the course is high risk, uh, perform stress testing and advise patients to, uh, to restrict physical activity. If the stress test is positive in the relevant territory, uh, then uh, again, revascularization is recommended. If the stress test is negative, uh, revascularization is still considered, uh, especially if the patient is young. For older patients uh, with a negative stress test, if CAD is ruled out and if the patient is still symptomatic, uh, repeat stress testing with a different modality can be considered uh, with uh, revascularization suggested if positive. Uh, this is a coronary CTA of a patient with an anomalous uh, left circumflex. Uh, this is not our patient. Uh, in this particular case, you can see that the circumflex takes a benign, uh, low-risk course uh, posterior to the aorta, uh, so revascularization would not be indicated uh, for this patient. All right, take-home messages. Um, coronary artery anomalies are rare. Uh, but if you work in a busy cath lab, uh, you will see them a few times a year. Uh, Follow-up imaging uh, to characterize the three-dimensional course is usually suggested. Uh, in our center, uh, we generally order a, a coronary CTA. If the anomalous coronary artery has high-risk features, uh, restrict physical activity uh, and uh, get a stress test. Uh, consider uh, revascularization if the stress test is positive, uh, if the left main coronary artery is, is involved, or if the patient is young. Um, there is uh, not a lot of clinical data uh, for managing coronary artery anomalies, so obviously all cases uh, should be considered on an individual basis. Thank you for watching.